is two weeks away. I just don't know how all of the conditions, at least my conditions, are, are met uh, in such a short time. So I just need to say that uh, for the record. Um, Henry. Thank you, David. I, I'm so inspired by, uh, by the Vice Mayor's speech that I, I don't know where to begin my own. Um, but I, I think particularly, Denise, that you, you got Steve Marsh to say the thing that we need to hear more than anything. That this is about one community. This is a zoning petition that is a part about one community in so many different ways, whether it's about the, <clears throat> the physical layout, it's not segregating MIT off into its part of the community, or, or even segregating Kendall Square away from the rest of the community. This is about building one, one single vision of that. And when you talk about the jobs piece of it also, we're one community. It's not, Ken, the jobs don't belong to Kendall Square. The jobs belong to all of us. And, um, and you've been very good at talking about the construction side of jobs, the jobs ahead of, and the union jobs as time goes on. And I want to throw into the mix that as one community, we need to look at Kendall Square as one hell of a job site for, uh, for everybody in the whole city. And that making on-ramps for, uh, for people of all ages to see that as part of their uh, part of their city and their place to be working, I think, is really important. Um, being on the school committee um, this term, as, as the mayor, I'm much more cognizant, I think, than I've ever been about how uh, there's a view that, well, that's there, and this is us. And you, I've seen speeches in movies where the, either Ellen Seminoff or, uh, or Jeff Young have made this statement. Think about kids on Windsor Street. Do they think they're going to work in Kendall Square? And people always seem to think, no, they don't think that those jobs, which, by the way, are like right out the window, are not jobs for them. And we've got to change that. So I was really pleased to see um, uh, in the draft, what I think of as the draft about community benefits, something about workforce. But I thought we really needed to flesh it out and talk about jobs and construction, but also talk about what's the vision of the city are these? Uh, are we thinking we're we're going to make sure that our kids are all very well prepared, and if they choose to be scientists, technologists, uh, engineers, or math people, that's the STEM the STEM acronym, or if they just want to be part of the support staff of what goes on in the Kendall in the many Kendall Square businesses, that they're prepared, that they see those uh, those uh, employment offices as open to them, and. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for a way in which the community benefits spell that out, the whole, the whole question. And I know one thing I asked for was how many jobs are going to be created by this proposal. And I don't know if you were able to um, deal up with some numbers about what the expectation is of the number of jobs to be created in this, just in the zoning proposal. Uh, yeah, uh, we have this very rough approximation because a lot depends on the actual, you know, specific use of the buildings. Um, using some of the population density numbers that the city uses in general in projecting, it's in the order of magnitude of a couple thousand permanent jobs. Um, there's probably going to be, and that's being somewhat conservative because again, we're projecting, uh, construction jobs, order of magnitude, at least 1,200 new course of development, um, probably a lot more than that in factoring some of the individual build outs and spaces. So those are some broad numbers. That's very helpful because it, it leads us to start thinking really concretely about jobs and people, and matching matching people to jobs. You hear about the retail; those are going to be jobs too. There's there's going to be jobs of all kinds. And uh, but I'm I guess I'm absolutely most concerned because um, uh, I've heard this discussion about kids not going to MIT. I'm really less concerned about people uh, kids choosing to go to MIT than having the choice that they want. Um, and, and feeling as if they're well prepared um, in, uh, in math, science, in STEM, in the whole STEM area. And what we've come to understand, um, uh, and Kennedy sort of led us partly to this, is that school day is only 8.30 to 2.30. Kids are learning in a whole range of ways all year long and all, uh, and all day long. And so uh, creating some kind of an infrastructure that supports Sports kids really getting the enrichment they need to be prepared at STEM. If they want to apply to MIT, fine. Let them be prepared to go to MIT because we have had a great uh, system in the city of making um, STEM enrichment possible in school and out of school, summertime and school year time. 
So I, I'm, I'm asking for help and partnership in making that happen uh, for all our kids. Um, probably too many people have heard me say this, but when I first ran for office 26 years ago, 26 years ago, my speech was, you know, here we are between Harvard and MIT, our kids should have the best education in the country. They should have the opportunity to go work in all our best businesses. And yet we're still talking about that. And part of the conundrum is you don't learn everything in the school day. You have to have all those other enrichment opportunities, and uh, we need to build a system like that. So I think in the, um, in the community benefit sec section, there's a place to spell that out a bit, and, um, and I would look forward to seeing that happen. I also note that the, the nonprofits, the community benefit section I see is, I feel is still a rough draft uh, from what I've seen. It doesn't include uh, nonprofits, and all our general conversation about community benefits has been that we have, uh, that our, our nonprofits do a, a whole lot of work for us without um, uh, getting even noticed the needs that they have, and then we need a way for community benefits to flow to them. So this is not just about your petition at all. This is about conversations we've had about how are we going to allocate community benefits, um, uh, and there are some others that we already have in the bank, right? So I just want to make sure that this petition doesn't uh, limit the way community benefits are thought of, so that, similar to what Denise said, so that we're not able to really do the right thing based on the uh, city's vision uh, of how community benefits need to be um, uh, or collected and allocated and, and so on. So um, I, I mentioned uh, the part about the gateway. I did a little sketch. Um, Kendall Square is kind of like an oak leaf. You know, uh, if you think about going down Main Street, it's the stem, and then you have these little sort of cytoplasmic, I guess that's a biological term, but it, it doesn't look like the ordinary kind of square. It doesn't have the, the same easy focal point. And I think that the stem needs a little more attention, uh, leading into it. So our six other successful squares, Harvard Square, leading into Harvard Square, you know you're, you know you're coming into the square, and everything kind of leads to that crescendo of uh, commercial experience. Same thing in Central, coming from Lafayette Square, the entrance to the square. So let's not leave out the entrance from the neighborhood side, particularly from the community side. And I think that that needs just needs a little beeping up. Um, and some attention to that building that might be might be closing things off somewhere. Finally, on housing, um, Cherry Street, yes. I mean, uh, I know that Denise has been working on this a long time. David's talked about it. Even I had a shot at this some years ago, thinking, when, when are we going to be able to make use of this lot? Maybe it's for housing, maybe it's for something else. But I think that that's a good piece of business between us to get uh, done. And, um, and I want to call out the idea of Senior housing, and I know we've talked about that in uh, in some of these micro units or what have you. But you saw a natural, the natural experiment almost led to having that kind of senior housing from your own former president Paul Gray leading leading the charge for uh, housing for postgraduates, not undergraduates, not graduate students, but postgraduates of MIT who still want to be part of the community. And I, I think. Uh, there are others who would like to be hangers on to that as well. So I'm um, just hoping that that's part of the vision as it goes forward. So that, that's my checklist. Ken, I had, I had you next. Um, did you have a quick comment there? Um, I know you have to leave.
for really is uh, a big piece of Margaret Fuller's stuff because Margaret Fuller has this extraordinary piece of real estate that really needs some help in developing. And I haven't even talked to Robert Pibler on the fullest of this vision, but I've talked to her broadly before. But I would love to see MIT become a partner in helping the Fuller House in that neighborhood, serving those kids where it is having this impact. Uh, strengthen itself in the 21st century and largely around the uh, physical plant, but I could discuss that at nauseam. I just want to piggyback what Ken had said because he made me think of it um, just very quickly. When you talk about having the state of the Fletcher Academy Academy kids in particular be more uh, engaged in CMIT as an option, and I think a very full day that withered on the vine and the idea that was to get the kids from the school and they went on to the campus because, because the more you visit come on to participate, get benefits from, the more it becomes a reality, that's number one. Or the fact that the, the Fletcher Media Academy is one of the few five schools that has a science lab that's under disrepair, and you have such a wealth of opportunity and by way of intellectual capital that can be flowing into the school. I mean, these are just some little tidbits of things that MIT could have been doing, and that to, as I said earlier, about rebuilding and renewing relationships these are things that can be happening now. You know, uh, students from Area 4, a family from Area 4, a student from such a many to be able to walk into the MIT Museum and be able to go just because they live in Area 4. And, and those are, these are little things that don't cost, I think, anything. And, and for me, uh, I can't judge MIT so much on what you're going to say you're going to do. I'm going to judge you by what you've done. And that's precious little. It's going to, it, it takes a lot to build faith in me that you're going to improve that relationship. And now we have an opportunity, call it extortion if you like. Um, you're being filmed. Give me a scratch that. <laughs> um, not a good Public word. extortion is different. Public extortion, absolutely. <laughs> I don't want to hurt myself. But I just wanted to use that opportunity to say uh, there's, and, and Steve again has this in a letter that I wrote to him, which you can share with the council fell down some of these missed opportunities that I certainly want to have strengthened in this process going forward. All right, I have Tim, and then Leland, and then Craig. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Chair, and thank you for being here. Um, just to echo what Councilor Reed said, you know, about this true partnership with Air Floor, not only Air Floor, but East Cambridge, you know, there's other southern houses that need the attention throughout the Cambridge, and I think uh, we might see stepping forward to help those communities is very, very important. As East Cambridge and Air Floor are directly impacted by uh, this proposed uh, rezoning. So, um, you've certainly heard my uh, concerns uh, in terms of uh, really creating a, a real true partnership with the Cambridge Public Schools. I just think that it's it's sort of lacking. It's something that has to has to happen at, at this point, uh, especially with the uh, school technical arts. Uh, and those uh, students who are not going on to college. And, uh, we're all talking about kids not being accepted to MIT, but I'm also concerned about kids who aren't going to go to college who need assistance in, in getting a, a good uh, trade uh, for their careers. So I just don't want those kids to be uh, to let, be left out. Um, and they're doing the pathway to uh, the apprentice program, uh, you know, the, the jobs that are going to be created. But it's not only the construction jobs, but the jobs after. And, and, you know, as Denise or uh, Candace said about retail and things like that. So um, the vice mayor talked about the uh, open space. Certainly, I think the open space thing would be resolved very easily uh, with the multi-use path along the Grand Junction Railroad that uh, I feel very strongly about in terms of. Uh, not only being an environmental benefit, but it's also an economic development benefit for MIT and for the communities of linking uh, from Boston all the way into Sumble to North Station. Uh, I think that is very, very important. And I think uh, looking forward to, I know you're coming back with some more language, so I'm going to get very carefully, but I think clearly, you know, having that multi use path, it would be just such a boon for 
all communities, MIT, the neighborhoods, connecting the neighborhoods, kids using that to get from East Cambridge over to the Charles River, to the Moore School, and vice versa. So, um, and also, you know, a lot of people will take advantage of that. We'll be taking cars off the road. Uh, people will be able to bike uh, to work. So, those are certainly not new news to you, but my issues are so I'm looking forward to the next two weeks to see the uh, response on that. So, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Lee. Thank you. I wanted to just piggyback on this uh, topic that Vice Mayor Sims brought up about education. Uh, and this was nice, uh, specific tests, but you know, this was a comment previously by a school committee member who testified at previous ordinance meeting that he'd like to see more students admitted into MIT. Because I don't just want to see more students admitted into MIT, because you can achieve that by lowering the standards or just picking some students or making them. I want to see more students from CRLS prepared and equipped to meet those high standards. Um, and I, I guess I'll be careful, I don't think it's I don't think it's MIT's job to fix our school system. I think if we start to think that it's your job, then we betray the tremendous amount of work and time and energy and dedication that's been put in uh, by our present mayor, uh, by our two past mayors who are here at the table, uh, by the superintendent to radically improve uh, the state of education uh, within our system and continuing to make mayor's effort to, to work on STEM, the other STEM, the science, technology, and math STEM. Um, I think uh, the superintendent by, uh, by Mayor Barnes. So I think, but I think uh, you know, to that point, this, the school system and the people in the administration need to run and own uh, that we need to figure out how to make reach those high standards and have more of our students reach those high standards that MIT holds uh, to all its for all its, its uh, MITs. Uh, I think to that point, I think that there's just want to throw out a couple of things where you think that uh, MIT could. Continue to be a partner. I know that MIT already does a lot for school system. I'm excited to hear about uh, the engagement uh, that Councilor uh, Vice Mayor uh, Simmons has mentioned and, and Harry and Mayor Davis. I think um, you know there's a lot of there, if we, for example, were to look at all the schools, which schools uh, send the most students to MIT? Uh, you know, I'm sure there's some schools out there that send three, four, five students to to uh, MIT. Can we? Uh, can you connect those schools and bring them to, to Cambridge and have uh, our administration and, and the mayor and superintendent uh, try to learn some lessons from how they're equipping their students to get so many admitted in there? Can we look at the MIT program and figure out how we can start to build that pipeline uh, earlier on so that uh, we're, they're on track to, to graduate high school? Uh, I think that there's lots of opportunities for how MIT can share best practices from you know, uh, guidance counselors and, and principals and administrators from across the country and across the world uh, who are focused on getting students into MIT. What can we also learn from them uh, to improve our own system? But I really think that uh, I don't want to just. Uh, I think that MIT is, is, is an invaluable partner in helping to better prepare our students. But I want to be clear that it's not just your job because I think that uh, the trash from the incredible work done by uh, three uh, mayors and past mayors at this table and the superintendent. Thanks. Mr. Chair, um, I, I, I just want to the, well, the, you know, one of the points still in front of us. I, I just wanted to say to my colleague, I don't disagree with him when I say MIT should be taking care of our students. I certainly agree um, about about what he said and what the mayor said. I, what I am doing is using this opportunity to get your attention because it's it's not in a way it's not anything a, a part of the PUD. But we have your attention, and while we have your attention, I want not only you to hear us, but not only take what we could come up with, MIT has the intellectual capital to, to so that our students should be the greater beneficiaries of that. And, and I guess that's the way I, I'm trying to say it. So this not, I don't want to write a program, it could be a mid program, it could be anything else, but what I'm looking for while we have your attention is better way to strengthen out the dividends that are paid to our students. So I don't think there's any right or wrong way, and you may have something that we've not thought of, but I certainly want that uh, to be a part of what goes on going forward. That's what I wanted to just say. Um, Craig and then Nika. Thank you. I can understand how we talked about the charter street a lot, and I hope you can make Councilor Simmons 
happy on that. It seems like a very reasonable and, and doable thing. How this morphed into a discussion about education and MIT's role in helping the Cambridge Public Schools is absolutely beyond me. And I could not be angrier at that. Our education and the education of our kids is way too important to have it drift into this discussion like it means something. And I'm incredibly disappointed in the folks that went that way. Uh, Mika. Uh, well, continuing on what Councillor Decker, I mean, um, Simmons said about why we have your attention, you know, you heard that, that we have been for many years interested in a better use for the Cherry Street lot. Uh, we'd also dearly love to have the um, Grand Junction Railroad um, become more of the pedestrian and bike path that we think will really improve the connect conductivity of the city. Um, and I want to add a third a parcel to that, uh, which is the Emily Street um, the community garden. And that's been talked about for many years as well. So while we have your attention, is it on Watson or on Emily? So while we have your attention on these things, I think uh, I, all of those three deserve some um, consideration. Um, and I, but I would also like to echo what Councillor Simmons said, which is, um, she was mentioning the April 8th deadline, because that's the last Monday before this petition expires on the 14th, which happens to be a Monday. The 15th. So it would be a Monday on the 15th. Monday the 15th. OK, so back to April 8th being the last regular city council meeting. So we could, we could always schedule another meeting, but it, it is very clear that there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be talked about. We, we're still at the, maybe we're at 40,000 uh, feet now, but we're still not at the um, really nuts and bolts, the wording of the petition. We're still at the pictures and the conceptual stage. So um, I would urge, if it's at all possible, that uh, this petition expire and that we, you know, you're not going back to square one, obviously. You just pick up where you left off and we'll move this through um, quickly. But I think the resolution of the, the, pro the this whole uh, rezoning will be a much better project if we don't rush through it in the last 10 days. Okay. Um, any, any last comments over here? Not necessary. Thank, thank you. I heard every minute. I just want to just, you know, I want to end by a, a couple of little announcements and one comment, and I'm looking at you when I say this, that we, we can't forget the fact that, that the council is adopting a zoning petition which is very broad based in that the, the um, actual project review piece of this, which is so vital to the success of the project, is in the purview of the planning board. And you know, one thing that I want to just throw out there is this concept of the open pathway or whatever we're calling it into, you know, uh, from Kendall Square into the MIT campus. I want to make sure that the vision that we're talking about today is something that you folks can actually work with. And, and what I mean by that is, is that obviously, under the current zoning, if this is adopted, and if the headhouse there of the T does not change, obviously the vision is very, very different than what we're talking about today. So I, I'm going to throw that out there that, that you know, uh, and that's the risk, so to speak, that we we run into when we when we approve broad guidelines, and and the planning board is then looking at you know a, a plan that comes forward where the, you know people have to have to kind of move on their side to to get by a passageway if that penthouse doesn't move or if they're on an alternate plan. So you know I, I do want to say that that's something that I think is worth. Um, looking at and, and making sure that that one way or another we're getting the large entryway that we're we're all hoping we're going to see. Um, you know, I, I do want to thank Hugh for being here and giving up his time. Um, I know that the planning board has put an extraordinary amount of time uh, into this petition. I want to thank the members of the public who are here. 
I am going to announce that we're going to have an ordinance committee meeting on Tuesday, April 2nd at 4 o'clock. Uh, that is a little deviation from time. We're going to move it up a half an hour uh, because the mayor has a school committee meeting that night. Um, but that, that will be an opportunity for the public to again offer public comment. It is my hope that by April 2nd that we will have the current petition as we're talking about um, a lot of the loose ends kind of tightened up and, and uh, that we would be uh, discussing those uh, tightening of language uh, at the um, April 2nd meeting. I do want to remind folks from the public that they are invited to uh, two scheduled events that are going to be happening at um, MIT, and it is um, namely, namely uh, the name of the place, Five Grand Saints. Five Grand Saints. If you're looking at Five Grand Saints at one Broadway, it's the door to the right. Uh, they're covered, kind of, the windows and the door are covered with blue right now. <laughs> I didn't quite hear that, but I know that they were little There will definitely be food there. I don't know. Food. Uh, so that's tomorrow from 10 to noon. Okay. And, then children it, are and children are welcome. And then it is also next Tuesday evening from 6 to 8. Right. And that's an opportunity for the um, public to look at the kind of larger scale models that are um, in that location and to kind of walk through. And I think it's a much, you know, this is great for looking at massing and heights, this model that we have over here. Um, I think that the one that, um, that you will be looking at, um, it, it just really shows probably the first four floors of the yeah, building. It's really, you know, it's something that's still in progress as we're moving it, but it's a helpful tool to get such. We built it to look at the retail configurations, the, how the pathways would work, and think about the program. This, so it's really, it's, it's, it's really a street, street level view that we, we believe augments this model quite well. So you get the bigger picture here, this is the grand. And this view. will be also a little change. So I think it's important for people to see that and, and hear about that. So those two meetings are coming up. The ordinance committee that I just announced uh, on the second. We may have another meeting similar to this meeting prior to that. We're going to look at, at, at um, whether we can fit that in or not. Um, and with that. Can we go back to the city council? You need a motion. We need a motion to adjourn the city council meeting. Uh, this is a city. This is this is a special roundtable meeting of the city council, which uh, Councilor has led us in, and we have a motion now to adjourn uh, the city council meeting. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.